What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here and it's time to review Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. After one year short of a decade of absolutely nothing, Crash has finally returned and he hit hard, even surpassing the launch sales of Horizon Zero Dawn. The Insane Trilogy has become the number one console exclusive launch of the entire year so far, so I'd say that's a great comeback. Let's see what made it so good. Well, for one, this isn't just a polished up port of the original three games brought to the PlayStation 4. No, this is in fact remade completely from the ground up. All the assets, character models, and textures were remade in a brand new engine. Yet despite being in a brand new engine with developers who didn't even work on the original trilogy, this still manages to capture the feel almost perfectly. In terms of gameplay, it feels nearly identical. The way you jump, the way you run, slide, and spin, it's all there. Now Crash does feel a bit heavier than he did with the originals, which isn't a big deal, but the hitboxes are also more precise on the boxes and even enemies. This isn't broken by any means at all, it's still fantastic, it just means you have to be a bit more careful with your jumps and more accurate. And while this makes the first game very tricky like it used to be, the second and third games actually benefit from this extra weight as it feels even more natural. As far as visuals go, everything is beautiful to look at. The textures on the crates and enemies look nice, the environments are lush and vibrant, the only problem is Crash himself. In some areas the shading is very weird, with the top half of Crash being bright and the bottom half being dark, and oh his eyes. What did they do to the shading on his eyes? Hopefully this will be fixed in a later patch, but for now it's very distracting, especially in Crash Bandicoot 2. Other than that though, the visuals are very gorgeous to look at. When it comes to the soundtrack, it's just as good, if not better, than the original. Sure, the soundtrack for the first game in the trilogy is a bit more musical rather than ambient like it was supposed to be, but in the second and third game it really shines, whether it be the clanging of the pipes in the eel deal, or the tropical sounds of Turtle Woods. And then of course there's the boss themes. Oh, these are all masterpieces. What they did with Dingo Dial's theme is almost alien in how good it is. Here's part of his original theme. And now here's what they did for that same part in the remasters. See what I mean? Pure art. So with everything from the originals like the soundtrack, visuals, and gameplay looking even better than they did 20 years ago, aside from the awkward shading on the eyes and a few overly difficult areas thanks to the more precise controls, the Insane Trilogy is a faithful and fantastic recreation of the games we grew up to love. And with new additions like Time Trials in all three games now and having Coco as a playable character, it's even better. It pleased all the old fans and brought in lots of newcomers, so in my eyes the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy gets a 9 out of 10.